Hey everybody, we are in our little fortress of happiness in Couture Montenegro. We're not getting to our Couture Montenegro videos yet because we're doing something special today and we're still got to finish off Bulgaria. So <laughs> we get a lot of questions repetitively, don't we? Oh yes. <laughs> and, and, and just so you guys know for like the last uh, two years since we've been doing this channel, I've been answering most of the uh, questions out there on the videos on the commentaries when you make comments on our videos my partner in crime has started jumping in so now you're not just talking to me when you're answering or making a comment Julie might be the one that will pipe in to respond and I also encourage the rest of you guys to jump in and talk to each other in these comments definitely we appreciate these comments so please keep them coming so today we're going to get into travel hacks. Yeah, basically <laughs> FAQs. This, these are questions you guys ask us over and over and over. First of all, we're going to talk about safety and security online. Um, when you're online, you can be at risk uh, to somebody jumping onto your system. And when we're traveling around the world, we have to go into our banking system. We have to go into um, our stocks, our holdings. We don't want everybody having access to this stuff. So we use a VPN and we've been very happy with our VPN. We started using this. It was the second VPN we, we tried. Mm -hmm. We started using this VPN when we were in Ecuador. And when we first got to Ecuador, also by the way, we tried to get on Netflix and things like that. We could not get into our U.S. stuff. I mean, it gave us a very limited thing, uh, offering, and we can only do the offering that was offered in Ecuador. Correct. So with a VPN, your computer now tells people you're somewhere else, and you also have a secure portal for communication. So now we can go in and uh, talk to our banks, and we don't worry about somebody intruding into our privacy and we can watch Netflix. Yeah, and, and importantly, guys, we can get a hold of some US television, which This Is Us is so important to oh, me. I, I could care less <laughs> about This Is Us. I, I'm a 90-day fiance, so the two together are very important. You, you, can, you can watch sporting stuff live stream from different countries if they think you're in that country. So, you know, I'm showing you some of the stuff here as we're talking so you can see how easy it is to sign in sign off and this is on our phones it's on our computers yes. and so we have a special deal that we have with express vpn um we've communicated with them and so if you go through uh the link that we have here it's expressvpn.com forward slash warren julie travel you'll get three extra months if you sign up for the year. So it comes out to like $6.67 a month yep. and you get a secure VPN portal. And um, you know if you get a better deal elsewhere, by all means, go do it. But I will tell you the first VPN we tried, um, it was, I think it was Ultra VPN. And that was in uh, Ecuador. And we ended up not getting access into our entertainment stuff uh, very well. That's correct. Um, so next, let's talk about Capital One 360 debit. Well, just real quickly, on some of your banks out there, they won't let you in unless they think you're in somewhere that you're in. So if you're in a country that they question, like maybe it's Ukraine or somewhere else in the world where we've been, they don't let you in. And no. so if you're on a VPN, you can get in. Now, conversely, there may be some banks out there that say, hey, you're on a VPN, you can't come in here. So then you just have to shut it off. It's really easy to shut off. But Super simple. For the most part, it's a convenient factor and a safety factor to make sure you have that security. Yes. Now, Capital One 360 debit. I learned about this in the United States. Um, this debit card allows you to not have any kind of fee on their side for an ATM uh, overseas. It doesn't mean you won't get an ATM fee on the side of the bank that you are pulling money out from, but we have saved an immense amount of cash. Yeah, we we have. Um, we basically, when we go to different countries, you try to find out what banks aren't going to charge us a huge fee on their side here. And so here in Montenegro, I think it's Erst and um, Bulgaria, we didn't ever get any fees, did we? No, we did not. 
we were using the OTPs over there. Yep, Otepe, and uh, in Turkey we used Hulk Bank, and we had another one, and frankly I just cannot remember it right offhand. And Chase Sapphire, guys, that's another one that we got before we left the United States. We actually had them for years prior, loved them, but they have no foreign transaction fees. Yeah, it's, that's huge. It, it's a great credit card, and it's, um, uh, you know, same thing with, uh, with the Chase, uh, I'm sorry, the Capital One 360, the, we don't have those foreign transaction fees when we're converting from dollars over to whatever currency we're using. Mm -hmm. When Chase, Sapphire, when we're using that card, we are not getting charged either. And we have a link inside of our um, video here. So if you go to the description, if you sign up through Chase Sapphire there, we actually get uh, a little bit of a commission. So you know, we appreciate that. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, Helps we, us uh, be motivated and yeah. continue. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 we really only get a full commission on the first 12 of you that sign up. So. Um, you know, after that, I think it's it's a lesser amount, and then it's you know it is what it is. If but we we are not just motivated to tell you about that because we were telling you about that before we had that little link. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that we are giving advice on, we've given advice for so long to so many people, and we never made a dime. So on some of it, we were like. You know, do they have an affiliate program? We keep telling people to go there. We might as well make a dime off of it if we can. So, right. so in some of this, we've decided that we should do that because we send people to ExpressVPN. We send people to I Am Global. We send people um, over to uh, Chase Sapphire. We mm -hmm. might as well see, is there a way that we can work something with some of these people? Right. Next, we want to talk about Facebook groups, expat groups. They are so imperative to fitting in to a society, in my opinion, to being able to find people of like mind, of finding people that can speak your language. Because when you land in a country or you arrive in one, it can feel kind of isolating at first. Yeah, and let me, let me add in, because there's always people out there that sit on this pedestal, it's like, oh, I only want to get to know the people that are native to the country. Yeah, we, we understand that. We want you to get to know the Bulgarians. We want you to get Definitely. to know the Romanians. But when you go to these countries, understand these people have lived there their whole lives. They've got friends they've had their whole lives. They've got um, families. They've got, yes. they've got work. They've got things going on that the time to mess with you, Mr. American or British expat, might not be what they want to do with their time. I mean, right. it's easier to get into a circle of friends if you're going somewhere within these expat communities because you have other adventurous people that are ready and willing to share their knowledge and experiences, their trials, their tribulations, their victories. So if you wanna go somewhere and get to know how to live in a society and you wanna actually meet some of the locals, go there because then you have some of the locals that are they're wanting to meet some expats so and you get to expand that circle of friends and you get that knowledge. The way to find these is, let's say for example, you're going to culture Montenegro. You go in, you look for groups and say, uh, you just put in Montenegro expat. Yeah, uh, you're uh, going uh, to get all kinds of suggestions. A good one here is foreigners in Montenegro. Yes. So you can look that up. And while we're on it, don't forget Julie and I, we do have a Facebook uh, group. So just look for Warren Julie Travel and don't forget to sign up and be part of our group. Yeah, please join us. And there's a, uh, an, another group that has to do with um, uh, travelers and people that are out there that we just recently signed up on that was been a really plethora of information, great people in this uh, expat group. And um, they also deal with uh, homo, what are they called? Swap home swap things? Yes, and speaking of that, uh, just to go into something totally different, Warren and I have decided we are going to think outside the box just a little bit and we are going to look into home exchanges. If you're interested in exchanging homes with us, seeing gorgeous culture Montenegro, enjoying our flat, please get in touch with us. It's only Europe and the United Kingdom. We have our dogs, we travel, so we're going by car. But please do feel free to contact us. We do have paid accommodations at this point through April of 2023, but we want to hear your proposals. We're very interested. In addition to that, we're also thinking of doing pet sitting and house sitting. 
comment below on what you think of these things. We are, <laughs> I'm more into the idea of it than he is, but hey, we're pet parents. If there's anything we know, it's taking okay, care I'm, of pets. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. We, we've been doing the Airbnb stuff and we've been doing fine. We could do these month long Airbnbs and we get a great discount rate when you do a longer Airbnb, which is another one of our little travel uh, tips. Yeah. But the the whole thing is we know friends and have met people that have done these like house sitting things and got some house swap things and they've been able to get some really great accommodations. And when you already have a place and you're swapping out, it's kind of a win-win. Uh, and so you know we, we're we're interested in seeing if there's something out there, but the thing is we don't want to really bend over backwards deviating our schedule so much just because somebody has three days open over here because we do like to go places and stay for a month. Um, but we to... do love animals and we are good pet parents, so please <coughs> send your proposals. We're very interested and we will take very good care of your pets and we have our and own we, vehicle. We, we, no, we, we, we always take care, good care of our pets, so obviously. <laughs> I even um, cook for them. Julie signed up on some of these uh, wife swap, uh, not wife swap, um, home, wow. <laughs> home swap sites. Um, well, let's speak of those. Um, one is houseexchange.com, and currently it uh, appears to be about 135 euro for a year uh, sign up. And we haven't yet paid the fee. We, we're kind of just putting some feelers out there, but I've already got three people contacting me. Uh, for pet sitting and house sitting, I'm finding that trustedhousesitters.com seems to be very, very popular, and there are fees between $119 and $179 a year. I still haven't gotten him completely on board for me to sign up with them, but I do have a lot of interest. We really want to see the United Kingdom next year. We want to see uh, Northern Ireland, and we'd like to see Scandinavia. So we do have some interest in those areas, Western Europe as well later in the uh, part of 2023. So um, well, let, let me blend back now over to Airbnb. <laughs> okay. We, we First off, when you're traveling like Julie and I, uh, you can do hotels and different things if that's what you want to do. But if you go slow travel, roving retirement like us, and you want to spend a month somewhere, you get price breaks on your location. So yes. a lot of times 40, 50% off of what you were going to pay. So it's like getting the place for a month and for two weeks worth of payment. So always put that out there if you want to look at seeing how to you know, save money and cut your expenses. And then maybe use that as a home base and you drive off for two hours in a different direction, check something out, maybe you spend a night somewhere, but you still have your home base to come back to because it's going to come out so much cheaper. So that's a hack for you to find your home base and Go off and ten, you know, right. and, and explore from there. The sweet um, spot is 28 days, but you can often get like 7 to 10% off of a week. Yeah. Now, so you can also, if you can't do a full month, look at at least 7 days, and generally you'll get some sort of percentage. Now, we do have our place on Airbnb, so most of you guys should know that, and we've done some videos and shows some testimonies. People have stayed in our place. Um, if you go and you look at our ad now, there's only like one review. And I'm going to tell you, I think I probably overreacted a little bit, but if you want to stay in our home here in Montenegro um, and you see, oh, they've only had one person, one review there. Um, here's the thing. I This is an Airbnb. This is a home made by people that live in Airbnbs all the time. And I take great pride in our home. And we got a review from somebody that said when they came here that there were crumbs in the bed and I went through the roof, okay? I'm, I'm not gonna have that. that. That's a review that if I read, I'm not staying in that home because I find that to be just appalling. And I could not have that on my record and I was totally ashamed. So when we came back, we changed up our Airbnb um, program. We have uh, new people that are taking care of our property since our last trip here, but now we're like in the bottom of the barrel of the Airbnb lookups. When people are looking for things, it's like all the, oh, they, they want to go with the ones that have 30, 40 reviews, 20 reviews. So here we are at no reviews. Now we've got one review. We've had great reviews. We're sitting like at 4.8 something rating, but now we are, yeah. now we're back to one review. It's a five star, but one review. And, and we, we've had people stay here off the books too, because we come directly to oh, us. Yes. and. And so those don't make it onto um, the Especially Airbnb. our viewers. We, we definitely go out of our way to 
to uh, accommodate them. And, uh, you know, we have even down to the muffin cups. <laughs> so, I mean, we know what it takes to travel. We know what it takes to feel like you're at home. Yes. So when so we if, provided stuff here, we went out of our way to give you everything and then some. So if you want to check out our home, we have another video with like our, our home in Couture Montenegro, why, why we have a home in Couture Montenegro. There's different videos. Um, I'll put the link here at the end so you can check it out. Yep. And on to Units Plus. Oh, this is a great app, guys. It's it's a phone app, and then I'm kind of showing you some stuff here, but you app. have the ability to um, check out the current exchange rate on all the different currencies that are out there, basically, compared to the dollar, the pound, the euro, whatever your currency is, you can check it against other currencies, um, and then you know, if you're going to pay a bill, and you can see what it comes out to in your local currency. Also, it gives you weights and measures. Yes. Um, so if you want to go from pounds to kilos, or if you want to go um, in Celsius to Fahrenheit, you can change, check out temperatures, helps you with your fuel mileage, cost mm -hmm. of fuel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, So all these different obstacles you might have when you're coming from one type of system to another type of system, this Units Plus is magnificent towards helping you to kind of process things appropriately into the way you're used to thinking like I'm not quite used to Celsius yet but I do know that basically from about 19 Celsius to about 30 Celsius is my sweet spot for great temperatures so you start talking in the upper 30s that's gonna be hot but if I'm in my regular frame of mind with Fahrenheit you start talking about 30s I'm thinking you're freezing your ass off so it's it's a uh, you're thinking uh, you're freezing your yeah because if because <laughs> What is zero in Celsius is 32 in Fahrenheit. So 32 would be a warmer temperature in Celsius, but it's the freezing point yes. in Fahrenheit. On to Google Translate. Without Google Translate, we would be dead in the water sometimes. It is a tough thing, especially Cyrillic languages. That Cyrillic alphabet will will exhaust you <laughs> if you don't know it. And uh, you wanna make sure you're buying fig jam instead of some kind of strange um, eggplant jam that you weren't expecting. Well, and, and the thing is with Google Translate, you can swap that over into the camera mode and you put that over the um, item you wanna read and it magically translates it into your language. And it's something that uh, you know is, is a fantastic tool. Now, when you're using Google Translate, it's best if you have a good data hookup if you're trying to use that camera. Otherwise, it can take a while to um, translate. And you can also download a lot of the languages so you have them stored on your phone to help speed it up. Um, but if you're traveling and you're like us, like Julie and I, we have our um, T-Mobile program from the United States that we use on our American cell phone. And it gives us unlimited 2g and that sucks to be honest with you i mean it, it gives us the ability to use texting and communicate some on whatsapp but everything else is kind of slow so what we ended up doing is we bought a phone in romania, romania <laughs> because in america there's very little use to have a phone with two sim cards you're always in the United States, so most of the phones you have have one SIM card. Yes. So our phones from the US have one SIM card uh, slot. So the phone we bought has two SIM card slots, and we put in a SIM card from the country we're going into. We buy a, a data, I think we bought 500 uh, gigs of data here in Montenegro for like 15, 16 15 euro. 15 euro, and it's for 30 days. So there, there generally will be a cap on your amount of days. You can't just keep using it and using it um, till you expend you know, all of the uh, 30 or the 500 gigabytes. Yeah, so we bought this cheap phone for the sole purpose of using it as a hotspot, and that's been a big upgrade, upgrade on our phones because we just tie into our our data coming from that phone oh, yeah. so it makes if, my life easier at the grocery store yeah so so that's the way to do it you get get over here you get a phone with another sim card slot two sim card slots and you're good to go you in europe you already know about these two sim card slots but believe it or not most people in america we're one sim card people because our sim card will typically work decently in mexico and canada and there's not all of these other and countries. you can get these phones in the united states before you come yeah there are uh two slot phones if you're not aware 
Um, so on to ways. Ways for us in travel. Warren is the driver in this and he loves ways because it gives him his kilometers per hour for each little village, each little town, each city. Um, and he can look right up there because oftentimes they don't post this. Yeah, you, 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 when you're traveling through European countries, they expect you to know through osmosis or through living in this country that when you're between cities or you're in these different types of roads, what your speed limit should be. So you don't see the speed limits posted like you might in the United States, for example and you're left to wonder, am I speeding? Um, so when you're using the Waze app for your GPS navigation, it will, um, you can set it so that it will give you a little signal. You can set it for if I'm going five kilometers over the speed limit or five miles per hour over the speed limit or percentage over the speed limit. You have different ways of doing it, but it will give you a little ding and it will show you your, what, how fast you're traveling and what the speed limit is. So it makes it so much more convenient than um, on Google Maps doesn't give you that same uh, knowledge and so at this point I would go with ways to um, get around in most areas of Europe and so especially if you have a uh, decent data program if you don't have good data um, maps.me is good so when you lose all cell signal yes. you have a, a backup way of getting around but you do need to download those maps as you're going so know what your uh, travel destination is and Go to maps.me, download the maps along the way so that if you have no cell reception, you have that ability to have that GPS. And you know what else Waze provides? Let's say you're speeding a little bit. Sometimes it'll tell you a policeman is right down the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or an accident is on the side of the road. So honestly, it really is a it great way to go. Because you have speed traps ahead. Yeah. If you're traveling um, using um, airlines, Sky Scanner is a fantastic place to look for low-cost airlines. Yes. Close up a lot of airlines that you don't even know exist. Um, recommend using Sky Scanner. Also looking for uh, low-cost car rentals. Skyscanner.com is a the, the best place to go. That's where we found our best airline deals and our best car rental deals. Sure so did. go to Skyscanner.com. Um, also, if you're using hotels, I used them a lot when I was, um, before I was retired in business, and you want to collect all those hotel points. So anytime you're using a hotel, use those points, uh, get those point programs, uh, make that a part of your routine. We now mostly use Airbnbs, so we don't normally use the hotels, but we had a whole lot of um, uh, IHG, Hilton Honor, Marriott, um, Hyatt points that we got to burn through on some great vacations oh, yeah. before we were traveling full time as retired. Yeah. And on to health insurance. Boy, is this an important topic. Yeah, so, so for those of you guys that don't know, in my previous life, I was a licensed, actually I shouldn't say was, I am a licensed health life agent from the United States. Um, so when we retired, we looked at our different types of insurance in Ecuador. We signed up with one that was convenient that a lot of people in Ecuador use. But when we were looking at coming to Europe, we were looking at having to change our plans from what we had in Ecuador and mm -hmm. started doing a lot of research and there's a lot of programs out there. So we found the one that worked best for us and costs effective, um, and we looked at a whole lot of different companies out there and we went with I Am Global. So this being said, we were using I Am Global and I kept getting people asking about our coverage, our insurance. So I would send them over to I Am Global. And so after doing this, it's probably about a dozen and a half times, I'm like, you know what? I'm appointed, uh, I'm an agent, because maybe I could get appointed with I Am Global. So I looked and saw that they had an affiliate program and decided, you know what, I will sign up so at least if I'm going to be putting people over that direction. I might as well make a few dollars off of it. But I Am Global has a lot of different offerings, and I'm going to go through these. So, um, you know, we're paying, I think at this point, it went up a little bit this year to like $204 or so per month for us to have $2,500 deductible coverage with a million dollar cap on our medical. Mm -hmm. And we're good to go throughout most countries in the world with the exception of the United States and five or six other- Four others. Yes. Four other expensive mm -hmm. countries out there. And Hong Kong, Macau, Singapore, and Japan. 
can, I believe. Yeah. So now, first off, if you're not American, you can use these programs. They're um, they're not just for Americans. So if you're moving from any part of the world, going somewhere else, uh, I'm gonna go over some different programs. Some you'll you'll be interested in. Some won't apply to you. But I want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to listen to some of the offerings that are out there. When you go into my link, you're going to have options to sign up for different programs. So you have the Patriot Light Travel Medical Insurance, which is travel medical insurance for individuals, families, and groups. And it's coverage for medical expenses, evacuation, and repatriation, and it's renewable up to 24 hours. So you can come in here, take a look at the types of coverage and the uh, cost, see if it fits for you. The Patriot America Plus, uh, this is gonna be for travelers going into the US, and it's for non-US residents that are traveling to the USA. So if you're going to America and you want to have coverage in the States, this is the plan that you'll want to look at. Um, so the Patriot Light, as I mentioned first, that's going to be something. So if you're going to be traveling abroad and maybe shorter midterm types of programs, um, the Patriot America Plus, if you're going to be in America for a, a while and you're not an American citizen, the program that Julie and I use is the Global Medical Insurance. And so it's for uh, global citizens. It's uh, long-term programs, typically for one year plus. They're comprehensive worldwide medical insurance if you want them to be. So you can get like the platinum, we go with the bronze. Um, because so many countries, it's so inexpensive for medical insurance, it just is really easy to um, get by just paying out of pocket and probably never even use your plan, but we kind of use ours for catastrophic. So we have that million dollar cap, $2,500 deductible, but you can have a deductible ranging from $100 to 25,000. And you can have a maximum amount from 1 million to 8 million. So it depends on what you feel comfortable with. There's the Patriot, Patriot Platinum Medical Insurance. And so uh, for this particular plan, you have travel medical insurance for individuals and their families, and it will help also to um, you know, cover things. Most of these programs are gonna be indemnity programs that will reimburse you that you'll submit your claim. Um, so the Patriot Platinum, the global medical uh, program that we mentioned a second ago, um, either one of those might be good for you if you're a global citizen, if you're expat living abroad, and you can have this program for up to three, uh, three years, 36 months. You have also have the Geo Group program. So if you're an employer and you have employees that you're looking at uh, living abroad or living overseas, these are gonna be group uh, employer-sponsored health plans. They also have life, dental, daily indemnity coverage. Um, if you're just looking at doing multiple trips, you're gonna take a three-week trip here, two-week trip here, a month-long trip here, Check out the Patriot Multi-Trip program. If you're over age 65 and American, check out the Globe Hopper Senior. Always want to call this the Grasshopper program, the Globe Hopper, and see what is out there for you. Over 65, check out if you have a Medicare supplement. A lot of those may cover you overseas for up to six months a year. Check the fine print on what your program looks like. If you're a foreign exchange student, or going through a cultural exchange program, there's Patriot Exchange Program coverage. And then you also have uh, Student Health Advantage programs. So if you're a student uh, studying abroad, you have that program. And if you're, in the, if you're a student coming to the United States, you have opportunities for coverage as well. What about uh, if, you are a, if you're a crew and you're um, looking at uh, going overseas and you've got a, uh, you're on a ship, your global crew medical insurance program is potentially out there and the international marine medical insurance is also a uh, program you might, you might wanna look at too. And so it's um, you know different programs. Some of these I have not had to deal with at all because I haven't had people that have fallen into those types of buckets of coverage. So typically we're dealing with people under the Patriot plan, the global citizen plan, the Globe Hopper program. Those have been the ones we've had to deal with so far to date. Um, and they're good programs. So they've worked for us. Mm -hmm. And if you go through the link that I have in the video description, I will get a commission only if you use that link. If you can't find that link, please email me at warrenjulietravel at gmail.com and I will send you our link. So for those of you that may not be aware, 
Julie and I were traveling the world with our two dogs. We were retired and we're trying to see what it's like to actually live somewhere. We're typically staying somewhere for one to three months in our long stay. Sometimes we'll have short stays, but as we travel to different countries, we take our car from place to place. And if you don't know how Americans can have a car, go check out that video of how do Americans have a car in the US or in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we've got a whole video on that, but we want you to subscribe. And if you found our hacks useful and um, the information we're providing today useful, by all means, please give us a thumbs up. And we appreciate you utilizing any of the links that we are compensated from. And we are not doing these particular pro programs or products only because we are compensated. We were no. using them before compensation was ever even a topic. So until next time, have a great day, everybody. Goodbye. Bye-bye.